Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday, Monday weekly webinar with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst. Today's date is Monday the 11th of December and time has just gone 12.15 GMT. As always, with our webinars, what I'll be doing is I'll be leaving the risk warning slide, slides on the screen here for you guys to have a read through. Uh, it's very straightforward. It will keep my compliance department happy. Uh, it essentially states anything that is discussed in the webinar today is purely just my own personal opinions and my own views, uh, not to be construed as explicit investment advice or trading advice. Um, it is just very straightforward. Uh, it's quite standard practice. I'll just leave the, uh, the other few risk warning slides on the screen there while you guys have a read of it. Um, what has been going on in the markets over the weekend? To be honest, uh, not really in terms of the in terms of the, the, the economic or political news, not really a whole lot. Uh, the banking stocks are doing well in London. The Basel III uh, update that we had last week uh, was basically speaking better than expected. Um, the, it looks like that the the regulation isn't, isn't as going to be as, as harsh as, as, as traders were expecting and the banks are well capitalised. Uh, so it looks like by and large everything is, is okay in, in terms of funding wise. So we've seen some of the financial stocks uh, in, in Europe do quite well this morning. Uh, we've also heard talks that Martin Schulz of the Social Democrats in Germany is kind of keen to uh, open the idea of having, uh, having a coalition talks with the Angela Merkel's CDU, Christian Democratic Union. So we could be seeing a bit of political stability coming out of Germany, seeing as Germany has been without a functioning government for over over two months. Later today, uh, we're going to, uh, Theresa May is going to address her, her cabinet and also MPs uh, in relation to uh, in relation to the breakthrough that was made on, on the Brexit on the Brexit um, deal or, or progress that was made. There was an agreement made last Friday in relation to things like the Irish border uh, and also in relation to the exit bill, the divorce bill. And that has been a sufficient progress has been made, and that has in, 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 in turn has kind of allowed the, the the UK to kind of move on to stage two of the actual uh, the negotiations, but obviously not, not everyone in Theresa May's cabinet or even or, or the House of Commons are going to be happy with this. So we could see a bit of pushback uh, from that, but Theresa May is expected to say, state things have taken an opt opt optimistic tone, but then again, it, 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 it was a deal that, that she struck, so of course she was always going to say something along those lines. So we have seen a bit of continued weakness in, in the British pound, not that we get overly worried about, particularly against the US dollar, but it's, it's still it's a factor uh, that, is, that, is playing, uh, that is playing in the markets today. Take a quick look uh, at, the, at the week ahead. Uh, if you go to our, uh, if you go to our, to our website, uh, cmcmarkets.com, and under news and analysis, and on the, on the filter by section, third option down, weekly outlook, there's an article here uh, that gives you the rundown of what's, what, what, what we can expect over the next five trading days. Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, we have first half figures from Ashtead, Ashhead are, are a British company, but they derive the majority of their money from the United, from the US. Uh, so any time any, if the US economy is doing quite well, or also uh, because they they earn money in, in they earn a lot of money in dollars and they convert that back into British pounds. Whenever uh, whenever uh, the, the pound is relatively weak, Ashhead tends to do well. On Tuesday we have, UK, we have CPI numbers out coming from the UK. Uh, on Wednesday we have unemployment and average earning numbers coming out in the UK and on Thursday we have quite a few central banks uh, uh, giving us updates. We have interest rate decisions from the SNB, Swiss National Bank, the Bank of England and the ECB, the European Central Bank. Uh, it's all going to be fairly fairly uninteresting. Un the one that I watch out for might be the European Central Bank. The European Central Bank um, as Mario Draghi uh, has a several uh, several occasions expressed concerns over this of the lack of uh, proper inflation growth in the eurozone. Uh, even though in inflation, the most recent reading of eurozone inflation showed that it's ticking higher, it's probably not. It didn't tick up as high as the market expected. So keep an eye out for that. Um, obviously, on Wednesday we have the Federal Reserve, uh, and it's widely anticipated that the Federal Reserve are going to raise interest rates by 0.25 percent to 1.5 percent. And obviously, there's a press conference which will follow that as well. And on Wednesday, we also have first half figures from, Car from Dixon's Carphone. Uh, on, on the early hours of Thursday, we have an update from, Ch from China as well. Uh, we'll have retail sales, 
industrial production, pick that investment. So if you trade at any of the kind of Chinese sensitive markets, such as high grade copper or mining companies, or even the FTSE 100, because all those mining companies can move and swing around the FTSE 100, keep an eye out for that. And also we have the an, an EU summit at the back end of the week, and that's obviously going to be uh, shaping things. Potentially more to do with the, the British pound to give us the agenda of how things are going to flow in terms of negotiations. This section here gives us a quick breakdown of the very different companies that are important this week. As I mentioned, Dixon's Carphone at first half figures out on Wednesday. Also on Wednesday we have full year figures from Tubi Travel. Thursday, fourth quarter numbers from Adobe Systems. Uh, and and uh, that is sort of it for the week. It's been a pretty, it's been a pretty it's been a quiet week in terms of economic indicators. In terms of COVID reporting. Uh, speaking of economic indicators, if you want to find out where our calendar is on our website, go to the, to the Market Pulse option, fourth tab down, Market Calendar. And this gives a breakdown of the, actual, the various different economic indicators that are, that are coming out. As I mentioned, tomorrow, half nine tomorrow, we got UK CPI numbers coming out. We can see it listed here. Uh, the, previous, the, the previous reading was three. We're expecting uh, that to remain un, unchanged at, at, at three, three percent on a year on year basis. And then once the actual figure is, is out itself, that will be populated here in the actual box. Uh, so if you are trading the financial markets, it is worth keep, keeping an eye on the, the economic calendar, finding out what's, uh, what's, what is uh, due to come out, and also what, what is the expectation and the previous numbers. Let's give you a quick rundown here. Like I said, UK unemployment and earnings figures will be coming out on Wednesday. Thursday, we have quite a few central bank updates. We also have... French CPI numbers out. We also have the um, Spanish CPI numbers coming out as well, along with uh, along with the uh, along with um, Italian numbers as well. And then passing over to Friday, we have Irish GDP coming out, and we also have the New York Empire State Manufacturing Report coming out and, and the uh, a half one on Friday. So as always, I'll run through the major markets. Uh, on what what could we um, what could be a taking a look at in relation to your question there? In relation to take a position against the euro, I will be going through currency pairs towards towards the back end of, of the webinar. I'll go through the indices, commodities, uh, and currency pairs. Uh, anything that I don't cover, feel free uh, to just type in the type in the chat box what you would like me to cover. So we can see here uh, that after quite a quite a few weeks of kind of, uh, of of a fairly clear sell off. Uh, from November until, until only until only uh, end of last week, the FTSE was in quite a, quite a clear downward trend here, a lower low, a lower high, lower low. But now we seem to actually have pushed um, a bit a bit of few a bit, a bit of decent move higher in the last couple of sessions, partially helped by the weaker British pound. So you can see here, as the FTSE 100 was, was pushing higher here, we can see on the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator, that the momentum swung from negative to positive. So the market's pushing higher. Moment, positive momentum is, is on the rise, so you can be more confident that 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 the that move will continue. Uh, it's essentially telling us that the the momentum indicator confirms the direction of the move. So as the market is pushing higher, the next potential level to keep an eye out for is going to be the late November high of 7,472 on the FTSE 100. And if you do take out that level, that could be an early indication that this kind of downward trend has been in place since the, it's early November. Has come to an end, and if you do manage to take out 74, 72, we could be looking ahead and back up towards the 7,600 region. But if the market fails to take out this level here and runs into, say, for example, runs into resistance again in around here, or the 50-day moving average at 74, 58, 50, 60 in around there, we could be looking ahead and back down towards this level here, the December low of 7,278. And then if you move south of that, we could be looking back to the September low of 7,195. And then if you go south of that, we could be looking back down towards the April low of 7,088. Take a look at the DAX now. Not too dissimilar. After having a, a, a rough ride in, in November, it's only kind of pushing higher. But it hasn't quite taken out the most recent highs. So the big picture of the DAX has been... Clearly to the upside. After a decent sell-off in the summertime, we managed to push higher. A quite aggressive move to the downside here in the middle of November. It's been sort of range-bound uh, for the last number of weeks. Kind of lower end of the range would be 12,850 or so. Maybe say 12,800 on the higher, higher in the range, about 13,200. 
So I'm looking at about a 400 point range. And we appear to be at the top end of that range at the moment. And notice how on the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator, we can see negative momentum was sliding and sliding and sliding. So the selling pressure was, it was, was in decline. And I've actually seen momentum actually ever so slightly swing around to the positive side. So it now appears I'm thinking of the, any kind of the momentum is with the bulls, is with the buyers. So as the market's pushing up here, I, 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 the next potential level of resistance to keep an eye out for was where this gap was created here at uh, 13,316. And if you take out that level, we wouldn't be too far away from the record high, which, is, which comes to play here uh, at 13,534. So we could be more confident uh, of, the, of the market retesting the all-time high and potentially setting up fresh all-time highs uh, if, if we move back above this level here. Move to the downside, could find support in around the 50-day moving average, which comes into play in around here, in around 13,080 odd, uh, and then south of that and back down towards 13,000 itself. But if you do kind of break south of 13,000, uh, we, we could be looking back to testing the December lows of 12,810 and then if you go south of that we could be looking heading back down towards this area here in late September uh, which would be which is which uh, previous resistance back then I uh, came into play at 12,705 let's take a look now at what's going on in the American markets So the American markets uh, haven't gotten quite back to their record all-time highs, but they have, after the, uh, the, the correction that we did see at the back end of last week, we are seeing moves uh, move higher yet again. Bearing in mind the Dow has been on an absolutely stormer of an upward trend. Um, you know, the trend is your friend until it comes to an end, is the old market adage. So buying on the dip uh, has been uh, quite a popular choice with some traders over the last number of months. So it still, it still appears... And it's a fairly solid upward trend. We're not too far away from the all-time high at 24,535. That's the next big level to, to the upside to watch out for. And then as, as we go into uncharted territory, traders might, might be looking towards the, the big psychological numbers. 24,600, 700, 800, so on and so forth. So, but if you do see any kind of move to the downside, we may find support in around Friday's low at uh, 24,208. Or south of that at the uh, uh, Thursday's low at 24,071. What I will say this though is that as the market is pushing higher here, we're kind of seeing a fairly obvious decline in positive momentum. So that's a slight bit of a worry when the market's pushing higher, but the rate of change, the rate of momentum isn't increasing. It's, isn't increasing. It's almost like saying that the buyers could be running out of steam. It could be an early indication that we may see a bit of a turnover, but while the but price is, is the most important indicator. So the price is going up, that's, that, that's really where you should be taking your cues from. Uh, like I said, if the market holds north of the 24,000 level, it is likely that we, you know, this, this bullish trend will continue. And the chart on the S&P 500 is fairly similar. Hasn't quite got back to the recent all, fresh all-time highs. Uh, but we certainly are heading in that direction. So the all-time high comes into play here, uh, 2,665. So we're not too far away from the moment. We're, we're currently trading uh, 2,653. So we're about 12 points and 13 points shy of it. That which isn't really a whole lot for the S&P. So, so the upward trend is still very much in place. If we do see it move to the downside, we could find support in around the, this kind of consolidation area here. Kind of higher end of the consolidation area. Would be in around 2,626, and the lower end of that consolidation range would be 2,620. So, that kind of six point range, that kind of area may provide support should we see any move to the downside of the SP 500. And then, south of that, we could be looking back down towards 2,600, kind of a big psychological number. But notice how that consolidation and it acted as resistance on the way up didn't quite get there on the sharp sell off on December 1st, but this region. Uh, could see a lot of uh, could, could see fresh buyers enter the fold should we see a move down to that area. Taking a look now on the flip side of the coin on the gold market, which uh, hit a four-month low last week. Bearing in mind, we, we, we talked about at the, at the top of the webinar, the Federal Reserve having have an interest rate decision on Wednesday, 
widely expected they're going to raise rates. You could argue that a lot of, a lot of the rates is, 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 has, has been priced in, but in the last couple of years, the last couple of, say, December meetings, we had a December meeting where, where, rate, where rates were hiked in December 2016 and 2015, and we did see sell-offs in gold on the run-up to it. We even saw, even some, saw some selling pressure lasting in that, uh, for a couple of days after the meeting, but it's just going on. What happened in past performance obviously doesn't necessarily repeat itself. But the pressure is clearly to the downside. Uh, we, we've hit its lowest levels, not seen. We've taken at levels uh, not, not seen since April. So actually, in fact, uh, we're actually talking actually back towards kind of five month lows. Um, some of the levels that we we posted at the back end of last week for the for the gold market. As we saw the market coming off here quite aggressively in December, we noticed how we saw a fairly clear and concise increase in negative momentum. So markets moving lower, and the, the pressure is, is and, and the momentum is to the, to the downside. So the momentum indicator confirms the move in the underlying market itself. It's obviously taking a bit of a breather in around here. This area in around the kind of 1244 region, the market has taken a bit of a breather. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see a bounce back at the potentially this area here of say 1260 or perhaps up as high as the 200 day moving average, which comes into play just shy of 1270, around kind of 1266 or so, or 1268 before we potentially see another move lower. So we could see a bit of a bounce back to these areas here before we potentially move south again. And if we do move south, we could be heading back to this area, this, this price area here of 12.30. And if you need to go below that, we could be looking at heading back down towards the July low of 12.04. Taking a look now at what's going on in the oil market. Yeah, so I deliberately had the weekly chart open rather than the normal daily chart that I look at because I wanted to show you that how Brent oil is still above its 200 week moving average. And obviously, the 200 week moving average is really a good barometer of how strong the market is if the market's managing to hold up north of the 200 week moving average. So we can see Brent oil here holding, holding above nicely the 200 week moving average. We saw on last week how the market traded basically down to it and it acted as support. So that price there. Of to say in around 60, $61.60, where the 200 week moving average comes into play, we could see the act as support again. Granted, it hasn't really moved a whole lot to the upside. It could be, if the market does continue to get a hold up, it could be looking back up towards 65, testing 65, and if we go north of that, we could be looking back up towards about kind of, say, the, the mid 67s or up towards the mid, this, this price here, uh, up around kind of say. 67, 67, well, just shy of $68 a barrel. So, and then if you take out 68, then of course the kind of psychological 70 will then potentially come into play. Uh, but I am, it's, it's, it's encouraging to see that it's hanging up, it's holding above its 200 week moving average. Uh, but it's slightly worth to see that positive momentum is at this fading here. So, it could be as we're seeing as a decline in buying momentum and buying pressure, could be an early indication. That the buyers are running a bit out of steam, but over the last six months, it's been in a solid upward trend. Whenever we've seen signs of pullbacks in price of, of rent, we have seen uh, uh, fresh buyers enter the fold, so be mindful of that. WTI hasn't quite got it there to its 200 week moving average, but it's not a million miles from it. Well, actually, sorry, it, it, it's uh, sorry, what I was meant to say was it's, it's actually dropped back below it. Um, it hasn't been as strong as Brent uh, in, 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 uh, in recent months. But you can see here that it, um, it's now trading back below its 2 week moving average. So this level will need to be kind of retaken. We need to be kind of re-clear, retaken uh, before they kind of become more confident of the market pushing higher yet again. And so the 2 week moving average comes into play at about 60, sorry, $57.60. And if we kind got to go north of that and we take off the recent highs, of fifty-eight dollars and eighty-one cents. If you go north of that, we're going to be looking towards sixty dollars a barrel on WTI. And you can have moves to the downside, may gain support in around this price here, uh, which is kind of this 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 price here, uh, in around fifty-five dollars and around say fifty-five cents. So this price here has a lot of price action, a lot of a lot of um, support coming to play recently. So we could see some additional buying coming to, coming to play if you manage to move lower again. Similar again, the market is pushing higher, but as you can see here, we are seeing a cooling off in the in the positive momentum. So that could be an early indication 
the market's going to have a bit of a bit of a correction, a bit of a pullback. But like like a like a Brent, it's been a solid upward trend for the past six months, and buying on the dip has been a popular strategy. Taking a look now at what's going on in the currency markets. Uh, the, the, the euro was mentioned earlier on in one of the chat boxes. I'll, I'll, I'll discuss now the euro versus the US dollar, and also the euro versus the versus the British pound. So the euro has had a fairly inter interesting one. Um, the big picture has been it's very, very much to the upside. They had a great 2017, had a sell off in September, managed to find some support in round here. When we pushed higher in November, it managed to take off the, the October high. So there could be an indication that we are looking to get a retest, head back up towards 120, up, up, maybe get even, even retest, maybe even target 121. But for the time being, after this kind of this, this push higher here, we did see a bit of a drift lower yet again. The US dollar has been doing quite well recently, uh, so that so we could have taken some of the uh, some of the edge off the euro. But while we hold north of the uh, of the 50 day moving average, which comes into play in around 117.60, the outlook could could remain positive. So what I like about this chart is, is how with the push higher here in November it clearly took out the highs of October. So we're creating a higher high. Which could be a sign of maybe a, maybe a higher re reaction low, um, and then before potentially move on higher again. So, if we do take off the 50-day moving average, and as long as we as long as we maintain north to say 117, as long as we don't take off this low here, uh, we potentially see the market push higher on from here and head back up towards the November high of 160 119.61, and then up and then potentially up towards the 120 region. And then north of that, uh, the, the recent high of 120.92. And then once you go beyond that, you know the 121 region will, will come into play. Taking a look now at the euro versus the British pound, euro sterling. So the euro had a fairly obviously got quite a sizable and initially sell off. Uh, on the back on uh, Friday morning, on the back of the sufficient progress being made uh, on, in terms of the UK EU talks, uh, but that, that that of course has, has turned around yet again. Um, it's pretty much dancing around or the 200-day moving average in around that zero spot 8800 in around here. So I would like to see some kind of, and it has been sort of range bound to the low end of the 200-day moving average, almost acting as acting as support in some occasions, and at the high end. Hasn't really gone too far beyond recently uh, on the 100-day moving average, so it has been range-bound enough, sort of 200, roughly about a 250 pip range. Uh, if we do manage to hang north of the 200-day moving average, we could be heading back up towards the uh, the 100-day moving average, which comes into play at zero spot 89.51. And if you go north of that, uh, the level you would really want to see, you want to see all these highs been taken out before you become more confident. That the euro is heading back up towards kind of 91 or 92 region. Uh, it has been a few occasions where it's treaded north of 90, but didn't really last very long there. So you want a sizable move above it. You want to probably to take off this area here of 90.49 before you can become more confident that the euro is going to have a, it's going to continue the wider upper trend that it has been in. Any moves to the downside, first have to keep an eye on for it is going to it's going to be the uh, the low from Friday. Which comes into play at zero spot eight nine sixty two. Sorry, zero spot eight six nine two. And then south of that, you could be looking back towards the eighty six region. We saw zero spot eight six after the after the consolidation uh, back in May. Look now at the dollar versus the versus the Japanese yen. So the, the the webinar itself will be coming to an end now in a few minutes' time. Uh, are there any other markets that you'd like me to have a quick run through? Uh, feel free to just type them in the, ch in the chat box. So you can see here on the dollar versus the Japanese yen, since basically late November, it's been making a decent surge higher. And while it's been doing that, so we're actually at its highest level now, it's probably about two and a half, two, about three weeks. As the market is pushing higher here, we can see it's been confirmed by the moment, by the moment, the back the indicator. Negative momentum is declining, it's declining. Then eventually swung to the positive side. Now it's actually been steadily increasing. So as the market's pushing higher, 
the momentum indicator is in positive territory and it's expanding. So the rate of buying pressure is on the rise. So it's more confident that this move is going to last. As you push higher, the next level to keep an eye out for is going to be the kind of 114 area. Um, notice obviously there's a fair bit of consolidation in around the 114 area from the October and November. And if you go north of 114, the November high is then potentially going to be the next area that, that, that buyers and the bulls are going to be keeping an eye on. And that comes to play at 114.73. And then south of that, if we do manage to kind of drift lower, we could act as fine support coming into play at the 50 moving average in at 112 spot 86. Notice how it did act as a bit of resistance as it's pushing higher. I once it finally broke higher, it made a fairly, once it finally pushed through it, it made a fairly decent move north of it. So it's almost so it's almost like there's, there's a fairly decent support in, in place already. And then it moves for, if you take off that level, moves to the downside in the um, in the dollar yen, may find support in around the uh, this this low here in at 112, and then south of that in potentially in, in at the 100 day and 200 day moving average in at 111 spot 67. Right, I'll have a look at the uh, Euro Seki and the Euro Naki, and then I'll look to wrap up the webinar. So we're coming up to uh, up to quarter to the hour now. So. Euro Naki. Wow, okay, this is a multi chart I'm looking at. I always like to have a look at what's going on in the kind of the big picture thing, the, the kind of grand scheme of things, the real big picture analysis. And the big picture analysis, if we look here from the lows of 2012, uh, right here, uh, October 2012, so we're looking over five years, it's been a fairly clear and obvious upward trend. We obviously have seen some decent pullbacks in that, but push higher, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Classic upward trend. Uh, so as I, as I said, the trend is your friend until it comes to an end. Is the old market adage. Uh, so what we see here, looking at the daily chart for a bit more kind of precise, precise levels. So watch out, watch out for. It's in a fairly clear, obvious tre upward trend. So finding the dips has been a, has been a, a, big, a popular strategy with, with some traders for the last number of months. So this area here, we see, seem to be a consolidation area, which comes into play around. Nine spot, seven forty. Nine spots. Uh, nine spot. Nine spot seven forty-ish in round here seems to be a consolidation area to the upside. Nine spot nine nine, and then the kind of psychological ten spot zero. It's going to be level, level to keep an eye out for on the upside. And have a look now at the Euroseki. Similar looking chart hasn't quite got to the same level, but once again, from the kind of, from the kind of lows of the, say, say the summertime at July 2007, we're broadly being kind of grinding higher. A lot of kind of sideways trading, but but it's certainly getting there, right? Uh, look at the weekly chart on the Euroseki. So as we've been pushing higher here, notice how the market's been pushing higher here. What we see is a fairly clear and uh, concise decline in positive negative momentum. Swing around to increase in positive momentum. So as the market's moving higher, the momentum with, with the buyers. This 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 high here from, from 2016 is potentially potentially going to the next level that traders are, are going to be keeping an eye out for because it's a level that this hasn't been seen in about a year. But also there this hasn't been much uh, price action up that high up. So keep an eye out for 10 spot 08. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking back a number of years. Yeah, if we go back, we take off 10 spots 10 spots. 10 spot 08, 
back to level, we're then talking, talking back to levels not seen since 2010. And then I would be potentially keeping an eye out for probably this area here in around, in around this price of 10 spot 5.1. Uh, we saw a bit of consolidation in around there. So because there isn't much to go on price wise, it, it's possible that, that, that traders who, who use charts are also going to be looking at the same handful of prices because there just isn't much actually price action north of 10. So keep an eye on a, on a, a daily chart. Yeah, so it's fairly fairly obvious upper trend that, that that we're in. So keep any move to the downside may find support in around here, in around the nine spot three, uh, nine spot nine three area, or even down as low as kind of nine spot nine. And it's only if it's going to take off these lows here, in around say nine spot eight three, then we're actually potentially looking looking to get worried. You're very welcome. No worries. Uh, just before we actually wrap up the webinar, I just want to show you. Some of the articles that we write get posted on, on the news and analysis section of the website. Uh, that can be found here. This is a breakdown of the articles. Several of them a day get, get, get uploaded. Keep an eye on those. Some of the articles get posted there. Some of them get posted on Insights. Uh, insights can be found by clicking on the Market Pulse tab, a second option down. Some of the updates that we do, we post in there. Data alerts, uh, discussions about or information about webinars and so on and so forth, and some of the articles that we write get posted in there. Chart forum, which I'm, which I'm looking at here, is under Market Pulse also, third option down. What it is, is it's a quick look at a particular market and a few hundred, I would write a few hundred words uh, about what's going on in a particular market, um, and it's basically some potential uh, trading ideas or potential views that, that, that uh, are prices that I think are pertinent. Also, just before I wrap things up, uh, other seminars that we, that we are hosting can be found in uh, other webinars uh, that, that we are hosting can be found in the same place where you found this one. So on Wednesday the 13th of December, in a couple of days' time, there's a webinar on commodity trends. That's starting at 9, sorry, 7.30 p.m. UK time. Next Monday at 12.15, I'll be back on the hot seat giving the Monday weekly webinar. And on Wednesday the 20th of December at half 7 p.m. UK time, there will be the Next Generation Forex webinar. Uh, I want to thank you for your patience and uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, have a good trading week. Have good luck and hopefully uh, we'll be in touch next week. Thank you very much.